Hello, this is Minder Chen. I'm a professor of MIS at Martin Business School of Business Economics at CSU Channel Island. In this lecture, we're going to talk about Web 2.0 and beyond. And Web 2.0 is kind of a phenomenon describing a lot of emerging trend on um, on the web. Um, Tim O'Reilly um, kind of coined the term in actually 2005. So, so you know this is not a totally new phenomenon, but some of the characteristic and, and unique feature which we identify as Web 2.0 still um, play an important role um, in, in the e-commerce arena. So let's look at um, Ting O'Reilly's um, definition a little bit. And Web 2.0 um, kind of consider the whole network is the platform. Um, so our computing platform is not limited to a standalone desktop computer. It's not just your laptop, mobile device, but also a lot of online resources on the web, which sometimes is referred to as cloud computing. So all the devices uh, are connected to the web. Uh, sometimes this is referred to as so-called the Internet of Things, a lot of sensor, connected sensor. And Web 2.0 application that um, are the one that really take advantage of what um, what's unique about the internet as and the web as a as a as a mean for deliver application and the delivery um of the software application are um uh, web based which means that uh we can continuously updating the software uh and, and easily updating it um uh, this is the term we call it perpetual beta uh, let's look at just Google um, Gmail as an example. Uh, for quite a while, although a lot of people have been using Gmail, uh, Google still refer to Gmail as kind of a beta version. And perpetual beta just means what Google is constantly updating Gmail. So you, you don't hear, at least you don't hear like, uh, Gmail 2.0, Gmail 3.0. It's just Gmail, um, which goes through many iteration in, in terms of update. Web-based application uh, certainly has some advantage over client server, traditional client server application. You can easily update it, and the upgrade is um, basically just on the server side. Deployment is easy because that's just deploy on the server and nothing to be installed on the client side. And also you don't have a chance and hopefully you don't really need to to train the user to use um, the application. Let's come back. Um, so on the web, when more people use the application of the software, um, the software and the application uh, tends to be more valuable to its user. And this is referred to as so-called network effect. In the Web 2.0 environment, uh, a lot of time users not just consume data, but also a lot of time they would remix data from multiple stores to create new application. And we refer to this as what we call data mashup. And user voluntarily um, generate a lot of data or information which uh, can be used by others in, in the remixing uh, process. And the most significant kind of feature of Web 2.0 is that through the network effect, Web 2.0 um, intended to create an architecture of participation, which means allow everybody to be a creator, 
to be t uh, able to share information with other to be able to um, express their opinion um, and feeling and therefore we refer to as an architectural participation and because of that we really need to make the web application very easy to use by everybody uh, they don't need to purchase or install any additional software tool Technology such as, such as AJAX, uh, asynchronous JavaScript XML, uh, allow us to develop very rich user experience application and with drag and drop and with more instance um, feedback. And so let's look at a few other uh, Web 2.0 um, related features. Let's talk about some of the principle behind Web 2.0, which we kind of briefly touch. Um, first of all, we want, we want to treat the web as a platform, which allowed a lot of self-service and using algorithm to automate things to help people uh, who uh, usually don't get a lot of assistance. And when more people use the service and the system tends to be uh, performed better. Uh, BitTorrent is, is an example of such system. BitTorrent is kind of um, data uh, sharing software which take advantage of everybody's computer uh, in, in this type of uh, sharing. Um, this is usually called peer-to-peer -peer, um, type of application. Uh, let me see whether we can... Yeah, I'm going to show you what BitTorrent conceptually is about. Uh, before BitTorrent, we have services such as Akamai, which set up uh, some edge server, and the edge server can cache the original server's data, and the edge server is closer to some of the user, and so for instance, if the user requests certain data, and the, cache, the edge server has it already, so they can just return it right um, back to the end user to improve its performance. BitTorrent uses a different approach. It's a peer-to-peer -peer approach which used individual users' computer as a server to share data, information, video with other user. So if I request um, a, piece, a large piece of software or, or even video from um, people on the web, and I may get part of it from this user, part of it from this guy, and part of it from another person. And so I get a little bit of everything of that piece of software, and eventually I can assemble what I got from each one of them to get the whole piece. And once I have that software, I become, my computer become a server feeding that information back to others who may need it. And this, this is why we call it peer-to-peer. -peer. This allowed us to um, view such service without have um, a centralized high performance server at the back end. So let's look at um, some additional feature under this principle. Um, just like BitTorrent, the architecture tends to be decentralized. And the network effect certainly is in in uh, in effect, um, which is a key um, approach to facilitate uh, this Web 2.0 um, phenomena. Under Web 2.0, we, which is human being, is the media. Um, 
Time Magazine's Man of the Year in 2006 is you, which means each one of us, and Selfi, which has just been recognized as a Oxford Dictionary's word. Uh, people are interested in taking a picture of themselves, post on Facebook, or take a picture of uh, the dinner they have in the restaurant. Uh, so people are interested in uh, sharing their own experience uh, with others. Okay. And so we, we do trust uh, this, this type of user as a co-developer in terms of contributing additional content and other uh, of their wisdoms on the web. Let me use an example uh, showing here to describe the so-called mashup, uh, data mashup. Um, this is a screen snapshot of um, a Southern California wildfire uh, a few years ago. And behind the scene, it's really Google Map, the satellite image of, from the Google Map. But we're seeing some additional uh, symbol or icon uh, showing um, or in color-coded area showing where um, the fire um, is on the map and also where maybe the um, um, evacuation center uh, in the local community. Those information are additional data overlaying on top of the basic Google mapping application. Okay. So the main characteristics of mashup are combination, combining data from multiple source, visualization, like using GIS to help us to visualize data better, and aggregation, aggregate data from uh, multiple sources. and and and, and presented in an easy to understand uh, fashion. In Web 2.0, um, we, we try to harness um, our collected uh, wisdom intelligence. Um, for instance, um, the the NAPTEC onboard system, um, which is a map data used by MapQuest. Um, I believe uh, use some of the GPS device that we have in our car on our smartphone to provide traffic information. To use the wisdom of a crowd is what we refer to as crowdsourcing. I'm going to talk about this in, in much more detail. And on the web, instead of selling software, we try to provide uh, services through web-based hosted software application, which make the service much more scalable. And this is also sometimes referred to as cloud computing. And on the web platform, um, when we have more data that we can share, uh, and more people are willing to use it. And the software application, since it's kind of hosted, it we can access that uh, from multiple devices. For instance, if I'm uh, using Kindle application, reading an ebook on one device uh, on my laptop, like this is the one I'm using now, and if I switch to iPad, which I also have a Kindle app. Um, the King Kindle app can open the same ebook and know exactly where t um, I stop from another device so I can continue. And most of the application are light, um, lightweight, has lightweight user interface, their web based mobile app. And we do use recommendation system to leverage the long tail. Um, to help the user or customer to find out those less common items. And, and this is a 
kind of complicated classification scheme of uh, crowdsourcing or user contribution system. Uh, Sometimes user can actively involve in the contribution of data or t uh, other t um, of the wisdom. Sometimes they may do it in a more passive way. The active participation may involve aggregated content or other stuff. Um, let's look at a few examples. For instance, Wikipedia, um, everybody can go and contribute an entry on Wikipedia. And also there's something called open source software uh, like Firefox um, for web browser or um, Apache web server, Linux operating system are all example of open source software. And programmers around the world are contributing to the development of such software. Also, people can develop their own video and post it and share it uh, on, on YouTube. And on the stuff side, um, people can um, auction off um, whatever they they don't want to get rid of uh, on eBay. And in terms of um, Craigslist is also an example of aggregate uh, the service of goods which may be offered by people in different marketplaces um, such that to allow other people to identify such goods or services. Airbnb is an example of renting out your room which we may have mentioned in e-commerce lectures. Um, to other traveler, uh, hope um, sometimes cheaper than hotel, or sometimes just very unique um, house or room. And Airbnb um, does not own any of those room, and however they facilitate this sharing of your room with others. Certainly, was a price tag attached. And this is what we refer to as a share economy. On the passive side, for instance, Google's page rank use um, the web linking um, behavior to calculate your uh, ranking in terms of Google search result. And Amazon is using our buying behavior to recommend books that may be of our interest when we um, when we visit a particular book page. Skype is using our own everybody's computer who has a Skype's uh, internet connection to allow people to engage in voice over IP, um, audio or even video communication over the internet. So Skype doesn't really own any of the bandwidth used by its user. Kickstarter is an example of crowdfunding. People can post uh, a lot of times it's artistic project and, and hopefully some people are willing to contribute to get the project started. In return, they may get a ticket to the performance or to, um, they will get a, a copy of newly created artwork etc. The wisdom of, of the crowd, uh, one of famous example is Gold Corp in Canada, which in a desperate attempt um, opened its mining uh, geological data to everybody in the world and encouraged them to compete to analyze the data to find out where they should dig uh, to dig out uh, gold deposit. And they got hundreds of entry from people around the world, and, and eventually, using sometimes very complicated uh, model and tool, uh, as as that effort eventually turned into um, hired mining production and and rescue this gold corp from bankruptcy. Last, not the least, uh, a former student of mine, Jim Omer, uh, just started a new website called Pick Factor. You're welcome to visit it. Um, 
which actually gathered a lot of um, commentator on the web regarding basketball, football, baseball, and and, and try to rate a different team or different player, uh, uh, particularly for people who are interested in playing those fantasy football. Um, this can be a very attractive website for you to visit.